Number 10. Seal of Disapproval It's better to be safe than sorry, and you should always practice safe sex. It's also best to be smart and use your head, the one on top of your neck. 25-year-old Salman Mirza and his ex did not do this. The two lovers checked into a hotel for an intimate encounter, but a night that should have been a lot of fun quickly turned into a nightmare. When they didn't have a condom in the heat of the moment, they decided on another alternative, epoxy glue. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that correctly. To avoid a possible pregnancy, they glued Salman's genitals shut. According to the couple's friends, both Salman and his ex were addicted to drugs. They were both high as a kite when they did the deed, using the same substance they had often inhaled from time to time. After the sealing and the sexual encounter, the couple left the hotel without any issues. But hours later, Salman Mirza was found passed out in some bushes near his home. He was quickly taken to the hospital, but the doctors couldn't do anything to save his life. He died of a multi-organ failure caused by the glue on his penis. His family blamed his ex, accusing her of having killed him by putting epoxy glue on his genitals. And they're not wrong. But honestly, it was both of their decision to do something so incredibly stupid. Number 9. Death by Air Compressor Compressed air is a serious business, and apparently it can also be used to murder someone. Two men from Japan made an extremely dumb decision that resulted in one man's death and one man being arrested and taken to jail. While working at the Ibaraki Tsukuba City manufacturing plant, the two guys were messing around on their break and decided to let his co-worker force compressed air up his rectum. Yup, initiate the eye roll. They actually thought it would be funny to inject a blast of compressed air in this particular spot on the body. According to Fox News, a man named Yoshida blasted air up a guy named Ishimaru's butt and killed him. Just minutes after the air went up his butt, he got sick. He had to be taken to the hospital and he later perished from internal injuries. His co-worker admitted what happened to the authorities and was arrested for it. But what makes this story so exceptional is that, in a statement, the police said it was not the first accident of its kind. This kind of thing happens more frequently than you would think. And what makes it even more remarkable is that the air compressor was not even pushed up against the man's skin, it was only pushed against his clothing. But the powerful release of air still went up his butt and caused immense damage to his lungs, which ended up killing him. Number 8. Gasoline Cocktail Gasoline is poison. Drinking gasoline is obviously a horrible idea, and when you add fire to the situation, you have quite the combustion cocktail. A man named Gary from North Carolina accidentally guzzled a jar of gasoline. Gross. He had been in his friend's apartment when he mistook a jar of gas for a jar of clear liquor. It seems pretty obvious that you shouldn't be drinking out of a random glass jar in people's houses, but don't worry, this story gets even dumber as we go on. So Gary accidentally drank some of the gasoline, he takes a big gulp, realizes what it was, and then spits the rest out. Some of it ended up dripping on his clothes. If he had just taken one gulp of gasoline, Gary would have lived to at least see one more day. But after drinking gasoline, Gary decided to step outside and have a cigarette. When he lit up, he burst into flames. He was immediately rushed to the hospital with severe burns, but unfortunately, Gary died later that day. According to the Havelock police, alcohol was definitely involved in the incident. Are you surprised? Most dumb decisions are typically made while under the influence of alcohol or some other substance. Oh, and in case you live under a rock and didn't know that gasoline was flammable, well, now you do. On a scale of 1 to 10, how dumb is this guy? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. Distracted Driving This next one is pretty embarrassing. And there's a reason why most places have made it illegal to use your phone while driving. It's called distracted driving, and it is very dangerous. But one guy in Michigan took the dangers of distracted driving to a whole new level. According to the Detroit News, the driver had no pants on. He was watching adult videos on his phone, and he was driving down the street without wearing a seatbelt. 
One of the representatives from the Michigan State Police stated that it was one of the most bizarre incidents he had ever dealt with during his career as a law enforcement officer. The pantless driver lost control of his vehicle while watching his adult videos. The car rolled over and he was partially ejected through his sunroof. As you can probably imagine, it was a gruesome scene that the police arrived to. The guy was horribly mangled and very dead when they got there. The lesson here is that the next time you're driving down the highway and feel a little randy, leave your pants on and put your phone in the glove compartment. Number 6. Exterminating Brain Cells They say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You might say that's exactly what happened when a man burned down his parents' home, killed three pets, and ruined his own life, all because he wanted to exterminate some ants. The guy was not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he wasn't a monster. He was trying to get rid of the pesky ants by burning them, but instead burned down the entire house. According to the report from the New York Daily News, the guy was sitting in his basement flicking lit matches at ants. You might be thinking this makes sense for a young kid or a teenager, but this guy was actually 21 years old, old enough to know better. One of the flicked matches landed on a combustible material, sparking a fire that quickly spread. He grabbed some of his favorite things and ran out of the house while it started to collapse in flames. The fire department came, but it was too late. The guy was treated for smoke inhalation and burns on his body. Two cats perished and one dog died, which makes you really wonder why he was carrying objects out of the house and not the living animals. What a prick. The house was trashed and the guy's parents were probably pretty upset when they got home. Number 5. Gender Reveal Reveals You Are Stupid Whatever happened to cutting a cake and seeing if the inside was pink or blue, or popping a balloon full of pink or blue confetti? When did gender reveals become so intense? Dramatic reveal parties have been trending lately with people doing all kinds of wild and hilarious things to announce the sex of their baby. But in September 2020, a disastrous reveal revealed one thing. These gender reveals need to chill out. A couple in San Bernardino County in California decided to use a pyrotechnic smoke generating device at their gender reveal party. It was a blast to say the least. In the video, you can see the partygoers at the edge of El Dorado Ranch Park with one person leaning down to light the device. Moments later, everyone in the park is screaming and running away in a flurry of chaos as flames suddenly raged out of control. The fire immediately spread north, according to the fire department. The fire raged and quickly grew into a forest fire, burning over 8,600 acres of land. Nobody died in the catastrophic reveal, but let this be a lesson to you expecting couples out there, especially in California. You don't need to use anything flammable to announce if your baby is going to be a boy or a girl. Number 4. Facebook Busted A man named John Mogan II made a seriously dumb and incredibly bad mistake. He robbed a savings bank in Pickaway County. Maybe he thought he was Jason Statham. We don't really know. You have to be pretty stupid to try and rob banks these days anyway. But what's really crazy is that John may have gotten away with the crime had he just been a little bit more discreet about it. After taking all that money home, which was only about $6,000, John decided to brag about it on the internet. He took to what has become the downfall of many dumb criminals over the past decade. Facebook. He posted photos of himself holding up the cash he stole for roughly 6 billion people to see. Well, you know who saw those photos? The local police. John was arrested and Judge P. Randall Nessie sends him to three years in prison. The judge also ordered that John repay the money he took from the bank. But the story isn't over yet. John was assisted by his equally dumb girlfriend, Ashley DeBeau, who also pled guilty. She was charged with being complicit to the robbery and sentenced to serve two years. She was also sentenced to help her dumb boyfriend repay the $6,000. Number 3. Don't Pee on the Crocodiles it's one thing to visit a lagoon filled with crocodiles and try to get up close and personal with one of them. That's a pretty stupid thing to do. Something even worse would be to try and pee on a crocodile. Also, that's really rude. The Nechupti Lagoon in Cancun is one of the biggest tourist hotspots down in Mexico, and it was most recently the site of a serious crocodile attack. It all started when a stupid tourist pulled down his pants and decided to relieve himself. As he urinated into the lagoon, a crocodile lurked below in the water. 
As reported by the New York Post, the crocodile leapt out of the water, clamped its jaws down on the guy's arm right as he was in the middle of doing his business, then tore his forearm off at the elbow. Ouch! It doesn't get much more gruesome than that. The guy struggled with the enormous reptile, but managed to escape and run away minus one of his arms. An ambulance quickly rushed the guy to a local hospital where he had emergency surgery. As of the time of the report, the man was in critical condition and fighting for his life. The lagoon where he decided to relieve himself is known to be infested with crocodiles, with some of the animals reaching at least 10 feet, or just about 3 meters in length. Number 2. Cookie Dough Dough This next listing is dumb, but not because the person in question didn't have a lot of brain cells. You know how your parents always told you not to eat raw cookie dough? You probably ignored them and ate it anyway because, well, it's delicious. But you may never eat raw cookie dough again after hearing this. Years ago, a woman named Linda Rivera died after consuming a few spoonfuls of Nestle Toll House's cookie dough. She didn't die right away, but rather she suffered a very slow, painful death. It actually took four years for the cookie dough to kill her. Unknowingly to Linda, the raw dough she ate was contaminated with a deadly strain of E. coli. According to a report from ABC News, her kidneys stopped functioning and she later went into septic shock. She just kept getting sicker and sicker. Wait a minute, does this mean this is going to happen to you? Are you thinking of the cookie dough you ate last week? Don't worry, you're probably fine. Linda experienced an exceptional reaction to the E. coli that caused her to get sicker than normal. She suffered a brain injury and had to have many parts of her large intestines removed. She was even put on a ventilator for months at a time. Eventually, Rivera's body couldn't take it anymore. She died in 2013 due to the medical complications surrounding the E. coli she had been infected with many years earlier. But is the cookie dough to blame? Absolutely. Before her death, Linda actually made claims against the company that produced the cookie dough that killed her, which caused Nestle to recall the product in 2009 after dozens of other cases of E. coli poisoning popped up. I guess the only dumb person in this story was whoever didn't check the product before sending it to grocery stores. Number 1. Snake Kisses To truly learn and appreciate something, most of us have to learn the hard way. If you get a DUI, you most likely will never drink and drive again. If you're playing with fire and your eyebrows burn off, you probably won't play with flames again. Or if you're a toddler and you stick your fingers in an electrical socket and get shocked, it's fair to say that this would be the first and last time that that happens. Most of the time, people learn their lesson and that's that. They have a funny story or a gnarly scar. Normal people already know that some snakes are deadly, and if you play with one, you'll probably get bit, right? One of the more ridiculous cases of extremely dumb people playing with snakes is that of an 18-year-old man living in Tampa, Florida. The guy caught a water moccasin, also known as a cottonmouth. These snakes are venomous and should not be played with. Rather than run away from the snake like any normal human's instincts would scream at them to do, this guy took the 4-foot or just over 1-meter snake home with him, put it in a pillowcase, and stuffed it under his bed. If you're thinking, what the heck? Who in their right mind would do that? You're not alone. Seriously, who does that? According to a report from the Sun Sentinel, the young man was so fond of his newly captured serpent that he tried to give it a little smooch. The snake wasn't as into him as he was into it, though. And rather than accepting his kisses, the snake sunk its fangs into his face. We don't know about you, but we definitely saw that one coming. The guy had to be hospitalized, and the State Wildlife Commission opened an investigation. Fortunately, the kid didn't die, and hopefully he learned not to take wild, venomous creatures home to make out. Number 10. Peeing on Nachos Some people think they can act however they want on the internet with no consequences for their actions, but they are completely wrong to think that. One tweet was made in the early morning on the East Coast when most people weren't paying attention or were asleep, but it received far more attention after it kept getting retweeted. In 2012, Taco Bell employee Cameron Janikowski posted a photo of himself peeing on a plate of nachos in his restaurant. Sharing this image publicly with the impression that he supported the most hated man on the internet, Hunter Moore, was a wrong and poorly calculated move for Cameron to make. Hunter Moore was given the title Most Hated Man on the Internet by Rolling Stone magazine for making a website dedicated to revenge pornography. Not so funny enough, Moore himself went on to promote the image Cameron posted. 
Moore declared Cameron, quote, the winner of the Piss Olympics, but everyone online had a much different opinion. A number of people were upset with the man for what he had done and tried to get revenge by posting his address online. The vigilante group Anonymous decided to take matters into their own hands and released Cameron's personal information for anyone to see. The young man claimed he never sold food that he peed on to anyone, but some people say if a food handler did this, it could be considered a felony, whether someone ate the tampered food or not. Cameron's laid-back attitude was at odds with Taco Bell's more responsible approach to the workplace. He didn't technically break any laws, just a bunch of health violations, but he did get fired from the job right away. He doesn't have to worry about being charged with a crime, though, and for that, perhaps he should be a little grateful. Number 9. Bad Babysitter A worker from a daycare facility in Mesa, Arizona was fired in 2016 for posting some inappropriate pictures on her social media. She shared a series of images and videos showing her flipping the kids off while she was taking care of them. Images of the woman holding up her middle finger went viral after she posted them to her Snapchat story. She used the caption, swear I love kids, to make parents feel like she was trustworthy. But it turned out that we, along with the angry parents, didn't see what was so funny about the photos. There were reports that the worker later received death threats for her actions. While we don't agree with the photos, she definitely didn't deserve that. To protect their reputation, the owner of the Kids Play Learning Center decided to fire the daycare worker. Discipline, structure, and authority are needed to promote children's well-being. So it might be a good idea that she finds another line of work. Number 8. Teacher on Twitter In 2013, Carly McKinney, a 23-year-old math teacher at Overland High School in Aurora, Colorado, came under fire after her social media posts caught the school board's attention. She was suspended from her job after it was revealed that she had been posting half-naked photos of herself on Twitter and joking about using drugs at school. The photos shared on the Twitter page, Carly Crunkbear, showed the former teacher in some provocative situations. It also showed her smoking weed and appearing to be intoxicated or semi-naked. The social media post got McKinney suspended at first, but later her employment was completely terminated. McKinney went on to defend herself, stating that the Twitter account was a parody and drugs were never involved in her professional life. But teachers and parents weren't convinced. There was a tweet that read, Such an easy day. Can't wait to roll up after school. There was another that said, Watching a drug bus go down in the parking lot. It's funny because I have weed in my car in the staff parking lot. After her suspension, many students demanded she be reinstated as they found her relatable and the board's decision unreasonable. Number 7. Halloween Costume Alicia Ann Lynch had no idea that her life would become a living nightmare after she posted a picture of her Halloween costume on Twitter in 2013. Halloween costumes can often be inappropriate, but unfortunately for Alicia, she really outdid herself. She made the disturbing choice to dress up as a Boston Marathon bombing victim. The Boston Marathon bombing happened in April of 2013. Three people died and many more were injured. Obviously, this isn't something you joke about, but apparently common sense isn't that common and went right over Alicia's head. A lot of people noticed the photo and they were rightfully outraged. Alicia received death threats, vile messages, and some people went as far as to dig up old provocative photos of her. Despite Alicia's apologies and attempts to delete the initial photo, her Twitter account was suspended. Once she got access to it again, Alicia tweeted, I have been fired from my job. I am paying for what I thought was a simple joke. I know it was wrong. I wasn't thinking. Clearly. What's the worst Halloween costume you've seen someone wear? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Olympic Medalist Tweet Stephanie Rice, the 2008 Beijing Olympic gold medalist in swimming, sent out a homophobic tweet on her main Twitter account after Australia's narrow win over South Africa in the Tri-Nations Rugby Tournament. Her comment read, Suck on that, beep! As you probably can guess, these remarks outraged many of her fans as well as gay rights activists who called on Jaguar to drop her as a brand ambassador. A spokesman for Jaguar Australia said the company, quote, was deeply saddened by Stephanie's words, adding, in no way do these comments reflect the values of our global company. She has been dropped as a brand ambassador, end quote. Miss Rice later apologized for the comment, saying, I apologize unreservedly for any offense caused. The comment was posted from my iPad on Facebook after a frustrating day. It was never meant to be public, and I have taken it down. End quote. This didn't help much, though, since she still lost her endorsement deals. Sporting endorsements are often lucrative, but if you say things like what Rice said, you could lose your deal with major companies like Jaguar. 
Number 5 NFL Cheerleader Caitlin Davis used to cheer for the New England Patriots, but she was fired after a picture of her leaked online. It was a photo of her and a guy who apparently passed out from drinking. What happens when you pass out at a party? Well, a lot of the time people draw all over you. And that's exactly what was shown in the picture. The internet reacted poorly since the guy in the picture had a weird scribble of a penis on his face, among many other things. It happened at a dorm in Boston College. Caitlin claimed, quote, I and my girls left the dorm and went to another house and came back to the kid passed out on the futon we were supposed to sleep on. The guys ended up drawing more on him because he was the first one to pass out on Halloween night. At the time I jumped into the picture with the kid, I didn't realize what I had drawn on him, which I take responsibility for not being alert. End quote. 18-year-old Caitlin Davis also stated that I and my girlfriends took pictures with him because we found it humorous how badly he was drawn on. Even if you believe her or not, we all agree the leak picture was an epic fail. Number 4. Mandalorian Former MMA fighter and actress Gina Carano has always embraced the force of speaking her mind. But in 2021, speaking her mind got her booted from the Star Wars spin-off The Mandalorian. She was kicked off the hit Disney Plus show where she played Cara Dune. Writers and producers stated, quote, there are no plans for her to ever return, end quote. The Star Wars star wasn't shy about expressing herself on Twitter. Carano's most controversial message, and the one that appears to have been the final straw, came when she shared an image from Nazi Germany and compared it to the overheated political climate today. She tweeted, quote, Jews were beaten in the streets not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that it got to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews. The government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. The tweet was deleted a day later. She also pounced on another conspiracy theory over the suicide of pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, posting, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. She also made numerous comments on social media over the COVID mask mandate, Black Lives Matter, protests, and the government. It's fine to have an opinion, but honestly, if you're in the spotlight, you really need to watch what you say. Number 3 Spoiler Alert What actor would post spoilers of their own show? Well, one actress named Nicole Crawler, that's who. Nicole gained fame and popularity on the internet by posting spoilers of different shows. She was even a one-time extra on the hit show Glee. But one day she went too far with her internet shenanigans and posted a spoiler that revealed who was crowned the prom king and queen in the show. One of the creators of the show found Nicole's post and was insanely mad. They even clapped back at her on Twitter. This set Nicole up negatively and got her blacklisted from Hollywood. Quote, who are you to spoil something talented people have spent months to create? Hope you're qualified to do something besides work and entertainment. The producer of Empire and the co-creator of Glee expressed frustration with Crother, who didn't know when to shut up. This incident forced Nicole to give up her dreams of acting in Hollywood and settle for roofing houses with her family's business. Number 2. Tweets Resurface Superhero movies and TV shows have been a massive hit over the last decade and have drawn fans from all over the globe. But with so many eyes, it's easy to catch when someone slips up, which is exactly what happened with Hartley Sawyer, also known as Ralph Dibney on the DC show The Flash. His super persona was known as the Elongated Man due to his abilities on the show. Sawyer was slowly becoming a fan favorite but quickly hit rock bottom when old racist and misogynistic tweets from his past resurfaced on the internet. On June 8, 2020, the production team concluded Hartley was not going to be returning for the remaining seasons. Quote, Hartley Sawyer will not be returning for season 7 of The Flash, read a statement from the CW producers, Warner Brothers TV, Berlanti Productions, and executive producer Eric Wallace. Quote, in regards to Mr. Sawyer's posts on social media, we do not tolerate derogatory remarks that target any race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, or sexual orientation. Such remarks are antithetical to our values and policies, which strive to evolve and promote a safe, inclusive, and productive environment for our workforce. End quote. Showrunner Wallace tweeted a statement that read in part, quote, This morning, many of you learned that Hartley Sawyer will not be returning for Season 7 of The Flash. Concerning his social media tweets, they broke my heart and made me mad as hell, and they're indicative of the larger problem in our country. The lead actor, Grant Gustin, reposted Wallace's statement, writing he was, quote, shocked, saddened, and angry when he saw the tweets. Words matter. Among the tweets users found was one from 2012 where Sawyer wrote, quote, The only thing keeping me from doing mildly racist tweets is the knowledge that Al Sharpton would never stop complaining about me. End quote. In 2014, he wrote, quote, Enjoyed a secret boob viewing at an audition today. Several of his tweets discussed assaulting women and one even read, Date rape myself so I don't have to masturbate. 
Sawyer issued an apology on Instagram saying, in part, my words irrelevant of being meant with an intent of humor were hurtful and unacceptable. I am ashamed I was capable of these really horrible attempts to get attention at that time. I regret them deeply. This was not acceptable behavior. These were words I threw out at the time with no thought or recognition of the harm my words could do and now have done today. Can a post bring an end to an entire career? Well, Hartley clearly found out the hard way that they can. Number 1. Roseanne Roseanne Barr's sitcom Roseanne returned with enormous ratings on ABC after a two-decade absence. Network executives were celebrating their strategy of appealing to wider audiences in the country after Donald Trump's surprising election win and the president himself called Miss Barr to congratulate her on the show's massive audience. But it all came crashing down. ABC abruptly canceled Roseanne hours after Miss Barr, the show's star and co-creator, posted a racist tweet about Valerie Jarrett, an African-American woman who was a senior advisor to Barack Obama. Obama during his presidency and considered one of his most influential aides. Ms. Barr wrote that Jared looked as if, quote, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby, end quote, an upsetting quote to say the least. Ms. Barr later apologized, but it was too late. In announcing the show's cancellation, ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungey said in an interview that, quote, Roseanne's Twitter statement is aberrant, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values, end quote. Roseanne had ended its successful comeback season and was expected to return for another 13-episode run. Robert A. Iger, the chief executive of the Walt Disney Company, ABC's corporate parent, shared Ms. Dungy's statement on his own Twitter, adding, quote, There was only one thing to do here, and that was the right thing, end quote. The sudden cancellation of a hit show, it had the highest ratings of a new TV series in years because of off-screen controversy was a first for the entertainment industry. These tweets should have never found their way onto social media. Number 10. Mexican Watch Thieves Last year, this pair of watch thieves made headlines in Mexico. She was gorgeous, he was violent. Together, they lived a life of crime and naturally, they were compared to Bonnie and Clyde. But who actually were they, and how did they carry out their attention-grabbing misdeeds? Eva Slira from Venezuela and Wilson Infante from Colombia had a good thing going when targeting unsuspecting people and their valuables. They'd taken to hanging out in the expensive parts of Mexico City. Watches were their thing, and there was no shortage of these, even in the age of checking your phone constantly for the time. The target would be distracted by the attractiveness of Miss Lira. Then her partner brought the muscle, mugging the unfortunate victim, taking wallets and valuables, mostly nice watches. Reports state that the couple were part of a gang of thieves. They had been in trouble before and had a close shave with the law. Following her and Infante's arrest, Evis Lira managed to distract social media users. They apparently joked about paying her bail. And it goes to show that while some criminals are pretty smart, the general public can be very dumb for the stupidest of reasons. Number 9. Recognizing Your Robbers It's not often that an attempted robbery ends in a kiss. That was the incredible and dumb situation that unfolded on the streets of Parcona, Peru. When three suspicious types riding a motorbike spotted a group of three women and one man, they must have figured they had their next payday in the bag. A closed-circuit television camera captured what unfolded. Things got dramatic when a guy got off the bike and tackled the male of the group, pinning him to the ground. The women must have been shocked and appalled, and one of them was also so surprised because she knew the people that were robbing them. Unbelievable, right? Talk about making a mess on your own doorstep. When the tough guy understood what was going on, he not only stopped trying to steal from the dude, he kissed his hand. How strange to receive a romantic gesture after being pounced on out of the blue by a criminal. The woman who was the potential next victim also planted a kiss on the thief before they rode off into the sunset. We're not sure who's dumber here, the robbers or the person they tried to rob. Still, it's better than a traumatic robbery actually taking place, we guess. Number 8. Bank Robbers Give Themselves Away on Facebook In the age of social media, people enjoy telling the world about every detail of their life. However, might be going a little far to allegedly commit a robbery and then wave a load of banknotes around on Facebook. Sounds like something from a comedy, but believe us, it happened. In 2015, a savings bank in Ohio was robbed by a man in a black hoodie. He was reportedly given thousands of dollars before he left. So far, so good, at least in a criminal sense. But when it came to tracking down those responsible, finding likely suspects turned out to be easier than anticipated. 
Couple John Mogan and Ashley DeBow, both in their 20s at the time, went online and posted snaps of themselves posing with large amounts of money. Boastful messages were written about living it up. Amazingly, Mogan was still on parole from a previous stint behind bars. What was he locked up for? You guessed it, robbing a bank. Mogan seemed to have a thing for taking pictures with the wads of notes stuffed in his mouth. Not very hygienic, but then we guess he felt confident about his crime. Police moved in on him and partner DeBow, and it's believed that Mogan was the robber and wore the hoodie so people wouldn't see his extensive facial tattoos. Number 7. Instant Karma The act of stealing packages off people's porches has become increasingly problematic, especially in Canada. It's one of the easiest yet most despicable robbery-type crimes that a person can commit. But in Mississauga, a suburb of Toronto, one of these sneaky porch thieves got some instant karma. He was driving through the suburb, scouting out packages to steal from people's houses. He saw that one looked enticing, so he pulled his car up, ran to the door, and stole the package. But this was in the winter, and he was driving a Toyota Yaris. He ended up getting stuck in the driveway because his car couldn't back out of the snow. This is the Canadian equivalent of robbing a bank with an empty tank of gas. The homeowner actually walked outside and saw the man with his package, which scared the thief, causing him to drop the package and run back to his car. In his haste to leave, he backed right into a snowbank, where he was now stuck between the driveway and the snow with his wheels spinning fruitlessly. The homeowner, instead of getting angry, simply pulled out his phone, called the police, and then filmed the thief desperately trying to get away. But he never did, and the cop showed up quickly and took the crook into custody. Number 6. Getaway Driver Drifts Off A bank robbery is nothing without a good getaway driver, and Ricardo Barrio sounds nothing like a good getaway driver. Back in 2010, he drove a couple of pals to the Wachovia Bank in South Florida. Now, in fairness to Barrios, he may not have known his friends were planning to do that morning. It was a Sunday, and he gave them a ride super early. And according to police, he'd had a bit to drink. Maybe a fun Saturday night turned into a Sunday morning. The would-be robbers broke into the bank and came out making a loud jangling sound. How come? Because they could only get their hands on hard currency. All the notes were safely locked away in the vault. Plus, to ramp up the dumb factor even further, the coins made it difficult to move quickly, what with them being so heavy and all. The two robbers counted on Barrios to speed them away from the scene of the crime. That didn't happen. He was fast asleep and remained unconscious throughout the entire commotion. We're thinking next time, don't get a delivery driver who probably spent a night on the f We're thinking next time, don't use a getaway driver who probably spent last night on the tiles. Barrios' friends were reportedly charged with burglary, and as for Barrios, we don't know whether he had a sentence handed down. Maybe someone handed him down a pillow instead. Number 5. Blowtorch Blunder A blowtorch sounds like a pretty effective way of accessing an ATM, right? Those things are surely so tough that you've got to use heavy-duty equipment to crack open the goodies. However, the practicalities are more complicated than you might think. And add some goofballs to the mix and you have a recipe for disaster. In 2017, an ATM machine in Everett, Washington was targeted by a smash-and-grab crew. Attacking the wall holding the machine in place was probably a wise first move, but when it came time to free the money from its metal stronghold, that's when things started to go very wrong. The thieves fired up a blowtorch. We all know a blowtorch is super hot, right? Unfortunately, it was way too hot and began toasting the precious dollars inside. Spotting the cash inferno they created, one of the robbers resorted to drastic measures. They went to the bathroom on the fire. Not only is that insanely stupid, for one thing, what if you burn yourself? Ouch! But it didn't work anyway. With their dreams of easy money literally going up in smoke, the thieves made a run for it. They were penniless, and what's more caused thousands of dollars worth of damage. Maybe they should have drank more on the way over, then they'd have something extra to put that fire out with. Frankly, we're impressed that someone can pee on demand in a stressful situation like this. That's about the only vaguely impressive thing about the whole sorry story, of course. Number 4. Strip Club Screw Up When you hear about a place that's both a strip club and a church, you can't help but wonder about the wacky situations that go on there. This possibly unique place is located in Ontario, Canada. The reason we're mentioning it is because a robbery took place there in 2016. And yes, it was a pretty dumb one. 
The thieves rolled up in a pickup truck early in the morning. It's thought that they did this because they figured everyone was asleep. Well, that doesn't sound too strange. However, what is strange is that they then drove the truck into the doors of the building, no doubt making a ton of noise and waking the people they didn't want seeing them carry out the crime. So anyway, after this commotion, they make their way onto the premises. Inside is what they're after, an ATM machine. All they gotta do now is take it out. But how? After struggling to get it out of there, during which time the machine has actually dropped down some stairs, they attach it to the truck with a chain. What follows is yet another passage from the Book of Stupidity. By this time, police were well on their way. They arrived just as the robbers made their getaway, dragging an ATM machine behind them on a chain as they left. After all that effort, they didn't even get away with the money. The ATM came loose from the chain, and it was all for nothing. The strip club slash church was faced with a bill for approximately $100,000 after these burglarizing blunders were finished. Number 3. World's Most Helpful Burglar Our next case sounds like less a burglary and more like a bizarre experience with an Airbnb. Over in Lancashire, England in 2014, aging couple Martin Holtley and Pat Dyson were coming home from a vacation. They walked into their home, which was clean, tidy, and, wait, maybe a bit too tidy. They had a strange feeling that someone was in the house, living there instead of them. If this was a burglar, then they had it impeccable manners, aside from a single burnt saucepan, that is. What kind of fiend breaks into someone's home and burns one of their saucepans? Appalling behavior. Apart from that, everything seemed all right. So who made themselves comfy in Holtby and Dyson's home? The answer to that question was coming in a truly unexpected way. Opening the door to the bedroom, they found the culprit, Lukasz Chanowski, asleep in their bed. You know what they dubbed him after that, right? You probably guessed it. Goldilocks! What wasn't so golden was the fact he'd access their lovely house without permission. Also, he didn't speak English very well. Mind you, would he have been able to justify himself had this grasp of lingo been perfect? We very much doubt it. Confronted with this terrifying, if tidy, sight, the couple shut him in and called the authorities. Other things Lukash got up to included bringing in supplies and having a relaxing bubble bath. As burglars go, he could have been a lot worse, right? So what's this guy's story? Apparently, he lost his previous lodgings and figured the couple's house was abandoned and up for grabs. Didn't any of the neighbors see him walking around and wonder who he was? Not really. They figured he was just their grandson. Ultimately, Lukash paid Holtby and Dyson nearly $300 and was given a two-year conditional discharge for his dumb yet audacious exploits. Number 2. The Penguin Stealers SeaWorld in Queensland was the location of arguably the most unusual burglary of 2012, a penguin. This seven-year-old fairy penguin named Dirk wound up spirited away from its enclosure by a couple of tourists from Wales who, it's safe to say, may have been a little worse for wear. Fresh from an Aussie beach party, Reese Jones and Carrie Mules were obviously after something a little more arctic in nature. Reportedly accompanied by a young Australian man, they somehow managed to break in and get Dirk back into their accommodation. Waking up and realizing their mistake, they went to the canal and tried to release Dirk into the wild. Um, because penguins are known for their love of canals, right? It wasn't long before authorities caught up with the Hellraisers turned zookeepers. Poor Dirk wound up getting snatched, but he wasn't the only wildlife under threat. The offbeat burglars also took a dip with dolphins and appear to have bothered some sharks with a fire extinguisher. It was pointed out to them that they could have lost their lives had they messed with the wrong creature. These drunken dopes were clearly in the wrong, but they seemed to have not had the full weight of the law brought down upon them. You can't really lock someone up for drinking vodka and stealing a penguin, right? Also, the offenders were genuinely remorseful, writing a letter to apologize for what they did to Dirk and the sensibilities of marine lovers across Australia. They were given a fine of 1,000 Australian dollars each. Presumably, Jones and Mules are back in the less exotic climate of Wales, where the only things to steal are sheep and the odd pigeon. Number 1. Calling the Cops on Yourself Our last story comes from this year and focuses on a pair of suspected burglars who made an ass of themselves while supposedly robbing a property in Staffordshire, England. And by ass, we aren't just using that word lightly. The backside of one of these middle-aged intruders proved crucial in drawing attention to their antics. So what happened? Everything looked like it was running smoothly, till the police were called. Not by a concerned citizen, either. One of the guys managed to call the cops, with his ass. 
Reportedly, the dumb dude sat on his phone with his butt and just so happened to hit 999. Talk about a bum rap, huh? Sorry, that gag was a little cheeky. The police were then able to eavesdrop on the situation via the alleged burglar's phone, but they did have a sense of humor about the situation, though we're guessing the guys who got arrested didn't. Taking to social media, cops compared the dangerous duo to the housebreakers of the movie classic Home Alone. By the way, when we say they're dangerous, we mean as a danger to themselves. Thanks for watching. Are there any dumb robberies you think should have been included on this list? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on The Bad Badger.